When they first came from Syria, many were Palestinians who again found themselves as refugees. And people living in Shatila camp on the outskirts of Beirut welcomed them. But soon enough, space started running out. There were 20,000 people living here even before the war in Syria began. It's a cramped space and people aren't allowed to build. And in the last five years, that number has doubled. Cut off from the rest of society, Palestinians here rely on charities to survive. Refugee camps have had social and economic problems and this has gotten worse. Before we used to deal with, say, 50 people, but now we have to deal with 100. We don't have the capability and the resources to be able to continue. And it's not only resources that are running short, it's also jobs. Palestinians are banned from working in more than 70 professions. And even in areas where they can work, they now face stiff competition from newcomers like Fadi. He told us he gets paid about $20 a day, but a Palestinian from Lebanon can earn double that. They see that many of us have come here and they are taking advantage of us. People need to live. They've escaped war and they have families, so they're forced to work at these rates. If you don't work, you can't feed your family. And as work dries up, Lebanon's original Palestinian refugees say they are now finding it harder to put food on their table. Haifa says her son Yassin is among those struggling to find a job. Shops would tell him, we have no openings, we already have workers. We can't hire you because we have a Syrian worker who earns less than you. Just like we are uncomfortable with Syrians here, Lebanese are uncomfortable with us Palestinians being in their country. A dividing line created by the war in Syria has emerged between these two refugee communities. And now both of them are scrambling for the little that's available. And Zaina joins us live now from Beirut. Uh, Zaina, we heard in your report there some of the refugees saying they felt they were being taken advantage of. Is anyone in Lebanon responsible for keeping an eye on these refugees and making sure they're treated fairly? Well, the United Nations is responsible for the refugees, but there are sort of two systems at play here. Palestinian refugees, be they Palestinian Lebanese or Syrian or Palestinian Syrian, fall under the remit of UNRWA, which is the UN agency created in 1949 specifically for Palestinian refugees. The Syrians are under the remit of UNHCR. And their situation is a little bit complicated because there are no refugee camps that are specifically for them. Uh, when it comes to UNRWA, there are some issues. There have been a lot of issues in the last couple of years because the money is drying up. Uh, the UNRWA is running a deficit, the highest in its history, and it's had to slash many of its services. Palestinians now have to pay up to 20 percent of their medical bills. Uh, teachers are being laid off and subsidies are being cut. They're very angry with UNRWA. They're saying it's not providing enough. And the Syrians, the refugees from Syria, are saying that if they're not registered, then UNHCR won't support them in any way, shape, or form. And when we were in the camp, the um the people there were very critical of the U.N., but they were also critical of international donors and international organizations because they're saying that these international organizations are running two parallel, parallel tracks. They have programs for the Syrians, they have programs for the Palestinians. That's only separating the two and creating more tensions between them. Zena Awad in Beirut, thank you very much for that report.